This is my PK on Jasper Jules' The Art of Failure, an essay on the pain of playing video games. Jasper Jules is a prominent scholar in the field of game theory. Once his term as an assistant professor at the University of Copenhagen in, in 2007, Jules began investigating how the fictional and non-fictional aspects of gaming operated in his book, Half Real, Video Games Between Real Rules and the Fictional World. In 2007, Yule began focusing on an entirely different question. In his book, The Art of Failure, an essay on the pain of playing video games, Yule asks, quote, Why do we do it? Why do we play video games even though they make us unhappy? He states his motives for writing an essay on the pain of playing video games in more specific terms on his website. Quote, The Art of Failure discusses the many possible explanations of this paradox, and while I propose an answer to the problem, the journey itself is meant to offer a new explanation of what it is that games do. The book combines personal confessions about failure with philosophy, game design analysis, psychology, and fiction theory." Unquote, Yule. A short time ago, while at WSU, I heard a fellow cohort who was focusing on gaming theory as part of his dissertation. I was perplexed about this choice and assumed that game theory referred to an economic concept. Curious, I asked my colleague, quote, I'm interested in what rhetorical angle of game theory within economics you are investigating in your thesis. Unquote. His response was completely unexpected when he told me that it was not economics, but video gaming culture. At the time, I was so ignorant of how the field had already taken off abroad and... After a short discussion with my cohort on his thesis, he explained, and I then realized how gaming theory is interconnected with many other fields, though my understanding was simplistic at best at the time. Now, as my semester with Dr. Jan Holmovec and Scholar is winding down, I'm a bit embarrassed at my ignorance of gaming during that dialogue with my WSU colleague only a short time ago. The importance of this field is amazingly interconnected, not only to digital rhetorics, but also to other disciplines of study outside our field. Holmovic has exposed me and my other cohorts to multiple texts authored by multiple scholars. Just to name a few, Espen Arswiss, Homovic and Wark. These texts not only insist that play is tied to both pleasure and pain, but also insist that we cannot merely approach the field of gaming studies within a language only accessible to those inside the university bubble. This is especially evident in how Yule's text and others on gaming have gained attention outside scholarly culture. Mainstream journalists, both in the U.S. and abroad, are now paying attention to game studies, as evident by the many interviews and articles on the topic outside of academic journals. Yule's failure, for example, has been featured in reviews and articles by the Boston Globe, Salon, the Wall Street Journal, and The Guardian. Such coverage reveals how mainstream media is not only aware of the field, but no, only no longer views game studies as an obscure scholarly inquiry. Game studies are now viewed outside the university as an accessible field of exploration for human nature, social cultural currents, and individual agency. While reading Failure, these passages come to mind as especially illuminating for me. To quote, This is what games do. They promise us that we can prepare a personal inadequacy, an inadequacy that they produced in us in the first place, unquote. 
I feel that the virtual room can act as therapy in dealing with the process of failure in the non-virtual. This reading of Yule's passage is further expanded when he writes the following, quote, The feeling of escaping failure, often by improving our skills, is central to the enjoyment of games. Games provide us a fair chance of redeeming ourselves. This distinguishes game failure from failure in our regular lives. Good games are designed such that they give us a fair chance, whereas the world makes no such promises." Unquote. Despite the unfairness that characterizes our non-virtual reality, I still feel that gaming is a source of therapy in dealing with failure in the real world. When we are exposed to our inadequacies while playing a video game, we learn on some level how to cope with failure in our lives in a manner that is productive. When we fail, we learn how to achieve. So, in life we go at it again. And this does not only apply to gaming, but in solving problems in our own world. 